Mac Mini M1, Sony A7S III H265 422 10-bit 4K footage. But do they work? Let's dive straight in. Okay, so we're in edit suite. We're using DaVinci Resolve 17. Now, my friend gave me some A7S III footage um, earlier today, so that's what we're gonna be using for this. He shot it in 10-bit 422 H265 4K, but he shot it in 100 frames per second. So um, I'm just gonna set up the project so that it kind of mirrors that. So the video format is obviously 100 frames per second. But then for the timeline, I've gone back um, to 25 frames per second because obviously in my normal workflow, if I've shot essentially slow-mo footage, I would put it into a 25p time frame. And I wanna keep that the same both within DaVinci Resolve and when we look at Final Cut Pro as well. So I'm gonna keep all that. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll bring in the footage and see how it plays it back. So I want to save that. And then my friend Ed's giving me the footage. So he said he just filmed some random stuff. So hoping it's family friendly, but I'm pretty sure it will be. So let's bring that in. And we've got the footage here. And we'll look at the file. So as I said, it's H.265, 422, 10 bit, 4K resolution, 100 frames per second. So what we'll do is we'll bring this into the timeline. So let's just get in the editing section. If you're new to this video, I wanna say firstly, obviously thank you for clicking on the thumbnail, it means a lot. If you've been around these parts before, then thank you even more for coming back. But if you've watched the video before, you know primarily I'm a Final Cut Pro user. I'm still working my way around DaVinci Resolve. So if you're a DaVinci Resolve user and I'm doing anything in a weird way, it's because I'm still learning, still learning the program. So leave a comment below if there's anything I can do better and that will speed up my editing process. But I'm gonna work in the way I kinda of know how and hopefully we'll get to the end result in the same way. So we've got the footage here, just scrubbing through it. And then we'll bring it into the timeline. And then this is the moment of truth if it plays back smoothly. So let's see how we go. So we're getting a lot of dropped frames. It's freezing. It's just not, it's not playing back how you'd want it to. Um, remember this is the Mac mini M1, eight gigabyte version. So it's the base model, 700 pounds, $700. Um, so we're just testing out to see how the base model deals with this. Everything we've thrown at it so far, it's worked perfectly, but this is the first time it's not really liking what we're doing. Um, which is a shame because obviously if you edit in DaVinci Resolve and you're coming up against this juttering and whatnot when playing back, then it's, it's gonna make life a bit tougher if you wanna edit in this way with H.265 10-bit 422, which is obviously what the A7S III is good at. Um, let's just export it and see how long it takes to export. So we'll go for the same as we did the other day. We'll just call this A7S3 25P internal. So this is all being done on the internal SSD. I'll do another test with the external SSD in two seconds once we exported this. So where I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna save it just on the desktop. And then we wanna get all this right. So it's 4K, 25 frames per second we want it in, H.265 and then all the rest can stay the same. So let's add that to the render queue and see how, see how we go. So we've completed the export and it took five minutes, 29 seconds to export the one minute, 51 clip. So um, obviously you can see for about two minute clip, it's gonna take about five and a half minutes. So you can work out for longer clips what that'll take. I'll now put the footage um, straight from SSD into da uh, DaVinci Resolve with the same settings and see if there's any difference with how that plays, if there's any bottlenecking. Obviously, because we've had the jutter in, in the internal drive on the M1 Mini, I'm expecting the same on the SSD, but we'll do a quick test just to see how that goes. So we've set up the new project. Uh, this is on the external SSD, so we've got the timeline resolution, which is the same 4K, 25 frames per second, and then obviously the original stuff was 100 frames per second, 10 bit. So we'll go straight for this again. 
and then we'll grab the footage from the external SSD and we'll whack that straight in there. Uh, don't change. There we go. So we've got this in, scrub in the same footage as before. We'll just check H.265, 422, 10 bit. Let's put this in the timeline. And again, moment of truth. Yeah, we're getting exactly the same again. Lots of stuttering. Just doesn't seem to want to uh, play in any way, shape or form. And as I said, if you're going to be editing a lot with DaVinci Resolve and an A7S3, uh, it's uh, it's max of H.265, 422, 10-bit, then you're going to be struggling quite a bit, I think. Okay, um, I'm not going to export this again because it's probably going to be, from other tests we've done in other videos, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same as, as the M1 Mini internal. So I'll jump into Final Cut and we'll load the footage in Final Cut and see if there's any difference with playback and exporting on there. Okay, so we've got the project set up in Final Cut Pro. We've got 4K again, 25 frames per second is the timeline, and then the rest is just all audio. So we'll set up that project and then we'll import the footage. So import media, we'll go to desktop, and then we want this footage. Now we want to make sure that nothing's being transcoded. So when we import it, it's not creating optimized media and it's not creating proxy media. Um, we'll leave files in place, everything else looks good. So we'll just import that straight away. And that's already in there. Let's see how the scrubbing is on it. Seems fine. No problem at all. So let's bring that into the timeline and we'll see how this plays back, if there'll be any difference. Let's go. Absolutely no dropped frames whatsoever. Just absolutely smooth as anything. Remember, this is exactly the same as DaVinci Resolve. It's H.265 footage, <coughs> 422, 10-bit 4K off the A7S 3 Sony, and it's playing it back flawlessly. We'll do an export on this to see if there's any difference in the export, but obviously it's looking good so far, so we'll just export this straight to the external hard drive, making sure we've got the correct settings. It hasn't got H.265 thing, um, export because I've not got compressor. So this is basically a really basic test. If you've just got Final Cut, you're creating kind of basic videos and you just want to export them. So we'll go for H.264 with this and then we'll just export. We'll just put it on the internal drive again. So that's just finished exporting and that was 2 minutes 36 seconds, so almost 3 minutes quicker than DaVinci Resolve. So obviously if you've got a long project, that's accumulatively going to be a lot quicker over time to export than DaVinci Resolve. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch me waffle on or listen to me waffle on. If it's your first time here, as I said before, I appreciate you so much clicking on the thumbnail. If you've been around these parts before, then I thank you doubly for sticking around. If you want to subscribe to the channel, it would mean a huge amount to me and obviously give the video a thumbs up. Subscribing allows me to obviously grow the channel, hopefully become YouTube famous, earn a bit of money and feed my kids and give them Christmas presents. So if you don't want my kids not eating in the future to lay on your conscience, then please click the subscribe button. Let me know in comments below any other videos you want me to do. I'm gonna be looking at doing some more intensive editing with the Mac Mini over the next week or so, so then videos will be coming, but obviously, as I said, let me know in the comments below if you've picked up a Mac Mini and what you think of it so far, or if you want me to do any other videos. But other than that, I'm gonna say goodbye, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.